Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another video, it's Saturday morning the 9th of March and today we're going to catch up with all things Delphi. It's been a minute since I talked about the Delphi case on this channel because I've been concentrating on the Madeline Soto case. However, there's been some filings and if you've been following the Delphi case closely, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about but for those who are not then stay tuned and of course we are still watching it's time for you guys to start being journalists before an angry Andrew Baldwin left the courthouse 13 news overheard him speaking to Richard Allen's wife saying it ain't over the world's watching the world sees what's going on It might be a minute since I've done a video about Delphi on this channel, but if you follow my second channel, Michelle Walks, and if you enjoy this channel, why not go over and subscribe to Michelle Walks because I cover a lot of content, a lot of cases over there as well as here. I did this very short video, less than three minutes long. Slicknick McClelland, the Delphi prosecutor, posted a motion for third time lucky to get Richard Allen's mental health records, both from his time at Westville and now his time at Wabash, Wabash Correctional Facility. In that motion, he stated this. The defence has now filed a verified ex parte motion for hearing on funding for expert services. Within that motion, the defence asked the court to approve funding for Dr Polly Westcott, a clinical psychologist, and for a confession expert. The defence state the conclusion to be drawn from this is that there is a reasonable basis upon which to inquire into the impact of the accused confinement on his mental state. It can only be done at trial if they bring an expert to the stand. Well, as I said in this short video, very short and sweet, to the point, Nick... What are you doing reading ex parte motions that are submitted to the court, to the judge, by the defence? Not for your eyes, Nick. Do you not understand the term ex parte, which means by or for one party? In legal jargon, it's referring to an attorney's communication with a judge or other arbiter without anybody else being involved. Nick, you shouldn't be looking you nosy Parker. Now, yesterday, he withdrew his motion for third time lucky to get Rich Allen's mental health records. And here is that motion. State's motion to withdraw motion for leave of court to subpoena third party records filed March the 6th. Now comes the state of Indiana by prosecuting attorney Nicholas C. McClelland, Slicky Nicky himself. Not slick at all. He's just not very good at lawyering. Respectfully ask the court to withdraw the state's motion for leave of court to subpoena third party records. These are the reasons. That the state received the verified ex parte motion for hearing on funding for expert services filed by the defence on February 26. No, you didn't receive it. Look, can somebody in the area drop a legal terminology dictionary into his mailbox because he just doesn't understand legal terms, it seems. Or does he understand them full well and he's been taking advantage of the information in these ex parte motions since the beginning of the case or at least since the beginning of Richard Allen's arrest? It seems so. Let's carry on that the state's access to said motions was not denied in any way, that the state believed it to be a document that was filed publicly. What part of ex parte for one party only do you not understand? That prior ex parte filings by the defence filed on December 8th, 2022, June 6th and June 16th, 2023, 
All were filed publicly and all were accessible by the state and anybody else involved in the case. Well, no, even if they were available to you, Nick, and, you know, they weren't given to you under the table so that you could have a look at, um, you know, the little snippets of defence strategy that you might be able to glean from them. If they genuinely were filed, not under the seal they should have been for the judge's eyes only, if that was true, why did you not, as a responsible prosecutor, give the defence and the court the heads up on December 8th, 2022, saying, oh, look, I've been given access to this, but it says ex parte, and therefore I'm just giving you the heads up that I don't think I should be reading this. I don't think I should have received this. Do you not think that's the responsible thing to do? No, because you've been taking advantage of this situation the whole time. You're only owning up to it now because you've been found out. That all prior ex parte motions filed by the defence were captioned like the current ex parte motion that was filed again. <laughs> The term ex parte is the clue here. That the state did not know or had no reason to believe that this filing was private. Ex parte. Say it after me, everybody. Everybody watching this video, say it after me. Ex parte for one party only. So blame the defence. So blame the defence for him reading stuff that he shouldn't have read. <laughs> Let the defence wanted it sealed or wanted the state not to have access. <laughs> it should have been filed in the appropriate manner. Again, if these things haven't been filed in the appropriate manner, then the responsible thing to do would have been the first inkling that you saw something not filed in the appropriate manner, which would have been, in your words, December 8th, 2022, then you should have gone to the defence and the court and said, listen, this says ex parte, shouldn't this be filed in the appropriate manner? Yeah, that's what you should have done. That's what you didn't do because you've been taking advantage all this time. The state was notified by the defence on March the 7th by email. Oh, I would love to see that email. I bet that email is gold. To the judge and that the filing should have been sealed and that the state should not have been given access. Knowing that it was not intended for the state to have access to said filing, yet you should have known that all along, and I'm sure you did. You've just been caught out. The state now withdraws its motion for leave to court to subpoena your records. Yeah, OK. So you've lost that one, haven't you? Right, the other big filing is this one. So this is a couple of days old now. This is the list of additional witnesses and exhibits for the contempt hearing. The witnesses that Brad Rosie and Andrew Baldwin, via their attorney, the fierce David Hennessy, who has won, I believe, 100 murder trials, not just tried 100 murder trials, but won 100 murder trials. So a contempt hearing, I think, is, um, you know, it's just a good afternoon out for him, isn't it? Well, comes now, counsel for attorneys Baldwin and Rosie notifies the state and the court that in addition to all witnesses and exhibits previously disclosed, he may call the following witnesses and offer described exhibit. So may call doesn't mean to say that he's going to call, it's just may call. Stephen Wood, Angela Sadlowski, Julie Melvin, Terry Williams, Courtney Parsons and Matt Hoffman. Now what's interesting is these exhibits. Communications between Gary Bardet, aka Figsolve on YouTube. Figsolve is a YouTube channel. Apparently there's been communications between Fig and prosecutor Slicky Nicky. Multiple communications. We don't know the nature of what those communications were, but number two, communications from Bardet about prosecutor McClelland. So we don't know from Bardet to who, but just mention Slick Nick. Three, Anthony Greeno's YouTube episode titled Crime Nation, Delphi Murders Watch and Review. Rick Snay on True Crime Investigates. So True Crime Investigates is Anthony Greeno's channel. Rick Snay is another YouTuber. His channel is Delphi After Dark. So this would have been Rick Snay appearing on True Crime Investigates. Don't know which episode. If he's only been on one, I don't know. 
Five, Baldwin's email to McClelland re the Professor Turco report. Interesting. Gary Bardet's communications with Angela Sladowski. Bardet's YouTube episode, Redelphi Investigation. So we don't know which episode that might be. Bardet's communications regarding court staff revelations. These are so interesting. Bardet's communications, re-disqualification of defence counsel. Communication to who? We don't know. Now, this is when it gets very, very interesting. Documentation of the relationship between Bordet, Fortson and Cohen. Remember, Robert Fortson is the guy who took his own life, but not before receiving the leaked crime scene photos from Mitch Westerman. Mitch Westerman... He's going through his own trials and tribulations in the court system. His um, trial has been continued till June, I think now. But Mitch Westerman is the guy who snuck into Andrew Baldwin's conference room while Andrew Baldwin was on the phone and um, took photos of crime scene photos, sent them to Robert Fortson, who then sent them to Mark Robert Cohen, who then sent them to a bunch of YouTubers. Bardet sending defence work product to McClelland. Now that is a really big concern. What kind of work product? And where was Bardet getting that work product from? And was McClelland accepting that work product? Was McClelland taking advantage of that work product, just like he's been taking advantage of having access to ex parte motions submitted by the defence since December 2022. Bordet sending information to McClelland, so other information other than defence work product, I don't know. Bordet identifying source in Delphi investigation, don't know what that means. Bordet posting regarding sending information to McClelland. Bordet posting redigging dirt on Baldwin. Bordet posting, reworking with law enforcement and prosecution. Bordet email of McClelland asking Bordet to delete everything. So McClelland saying, delete everything, delete, delete, delete. You know, do a gull. Do a gull and just delete everything. We don't want this information out there. Delete it all. I'm going to be in big trouble. Begs the question, you know, if it can be proven that Slicky Nicky has been taking advantage of information that he should not have access to and not informing the relevant authorities that he's been sent this stuff, that's a big problem, isn't it? That's a big problem for Slick Nick. You know, is it possible that Slick Nick could be disqualified for this? Is it possible that he himself has been behaving in a grossly negligent manner? Well, here's how I look at it. Richard Allen, via his defence team, has put in the notice now for a speedy trial. And that trial, under Indiana law, has to be underway within 70 days. There are only very limited options that Gull has to stall it, any. And it would only be if she's got another trial already set that has a speedy where the defendant is incarcerated. Does she have any of those situations? I don't know. But I'm assuming that the defence will be able to tell that. So Richard Allen's trial is going to start on the 15th of May or sooner. And we don't have the exact trial date yet, but a trial date must be set. If I was Baldwin and Rosie, would I want to rock the boat and say that Slick Nick needs to be disqualified? I don't think I would, personally because he's such a rubbish prosecutor, I'd feel confident that he's been on the back foot since day one. He's been having to resort to dirty tactics since day one. And all of this is going to come out in the wash, isn't it? I'd actually want to go up against him. I I wouldn't want another prosecutor to come in. Not only would it delay matters, because they'd have to get up to speed, would the speedy trial demand still stand? Richard Allen could be let out on bond, I guess, if that happened. But I'd rather like to go up against Nicholas McClelland, just knowing what a bad lawyer he is. I don't know. 
just asking questions here. Who else have we got? Barbara MacDonald on Court TV with leaked investigation material. Yeah, sitting there with the Audin report in front of her. Where did she get that from? McClelland emailed to defence regarding Professor Turcor. We've already heard that. Leaked search warrant affidavit prior to unsealing. Sergeant Holman communications with Terry Williams and our secret keeper. <laughs> Who, who's secret keeper? I'm guessing that they've got all this information from the depositions. There was Jerry Holman that was deposed. He's from the Indiana State Police. We had um, Stephen Mullen, Richter, a rector. Don't know who he is. And Mitch Westerman. So certainly Jerry Holman would have been a treasure trove of information. YouTube is Frank Meister and Sleuth video. So I don't know who's Sleuth, Sleuth Intuition. I don't know. I don't know which video. YouTube, the Inquisitor, true crime, claiming leaked communications from Rick Allen. Terry Williams posting about inside information of crime scene and of the investigation. October 22, 2022, YouTube video of Bardet discussing his knowledge of a bullet at the crime scene. So that was before Richard Allen was arrested, even. He was arrested on the 28th of October. 2022. Is that important? Because Richard Allen had not been arrested then and there was no gag order, there's no protection order. So I don't know that that's relevant. Knowledge that a gun was found at Rick Allen's house when the information was still under seal and a week before unsealed. Email exchange between Judge Gull and Attorney Rosie. Re accidentally misdirected email. So that was Baldwin who misdirected an email meant for Rosie instead sending it to um, Woodhouse, Brandon Woodhouse, in December 2022. Baldwin emailed to Judge Gull, list of media dissemination by state actors, Julie Melvin documents, and YouTube video entitled A Reckoning in Carroll County. <laughs> oh, it's such a shame that this is not going to be in front of the cameras. Potential exhibits on or about February 29th, 2024 and March 1st, 2024, the defence received an anonymous call from a woman in Texas claiming to have approximately 240 pages of leaked documents and agreed to provide them. The defence has received only a few of those documents, all of which appear to be made available to the public. The defence also discovered information from the prof... <laughs> Who's that? Claiming that he had delivered two pounds of documents to the Indiana Attorney General. And the defence con is continuing to investigate this claim. There may be additional exhibits. Wow. This is the final thing that's been submitted. I'm assuming this isn't to do with the contempt hearing. It's to do with the trial, because it says so. But this is just the state's notice saying that they've submitted a witness exhibit list to the defence. State may supplement the list if any new witnesses and our exhibits are obtained. So, yeah, I believe that's us up to date with Delphi. What's going to come next? Have you ever seen a case so effed up as this? I just can't predict what's going to come next. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Noodle. Noodle. Tilly. Good girl.